Salam. Tonight's topic is on art and faith. Few people in the West can remain unmoved when they discover the role of Muslim arts and sciences in the creation of Western civilization. And many begin to question an education that has produced what Edward Said has called historical amnesia. At the same time, all across the Muslim world, we have scholars and quasi-scholars claiming that, for example, playing music or depicting nature or human form in painting is haram or forbidden. My guests tonight, Hamam, Ibrahim, and Zayan, will help me shed some light on that. Um, I've um, heard people say, listening to music is, is haram, it's forbidden. You'll go, you'll burn in hellfires for, for doing that. Um, I'm sure you guys have some interesting stories related to that, maybe some scolding you've received. Absolutely. I'm uh, I've spoken to many uh, scholars and many teachers uh, during my time in university and, and most of them, all of them actually said that as long as the music, songs or any type of arts and culture is ethical, then it is permissible. It has its benefits and why not? If it's good, then we should have more. Alright. Zan, what do you think? Well, from my perspective, I think I have to go back a bit on an historical context and how, why um, the Muslim society now today is quite vilifying or, or putting a lot of uh, restrictions and limitations to art. Uh, in fact, we don't know why, I mean, back then, we've been thriving with arts. So we're going back to the Cordoba, uh, when we had the caliphates back then. Andalusia. Andalusia. And, uh, in fact, in the Persian area as well, I mean, the Muslim Persian. So, why is it that we are trying to be so traumatized is that I think if we go seeing and throughout uh, the historical contact is that uh, art was seen to be well let, let's just put it straight that art has to be neutral in some sense because uh, we create an art and we put values to arts so when art is seen to be uh, one of the it so happens to be a factor that brings down a civilization because when uh, we say the um, Caliphate was uh, when it was an the apex. Then it starts focusing on arts, and uh, you know, because being complacent and then everyone's like, society is thriving well, and then art thrives. But at the same time, it just happens to be as the last phase of you know a declining civilization as it were. So Edward Said would have pointed that out as fact. Uh, so when it seemed to be a part of a declining of a civilization and then at the same time the Europeans, uh, the Western civilization was actually growing through science so suddenly it's like the focus is turning on oh why, oh my god, we should go back to science and then, and then and I think that is what is traumatizing towards the Muslim society today is that we sort of abandon arts altogether and in fact we put in restrictions and whatnot and we want to focus on like you know because of this fear you yeah the fear yes so I know I know you're probably gonna uh, tell me this because um, I agree with you on the when the Renaissance or Renaissance in Europe started yes. uh, coincided somewhere around the same time that the downfall of the of the Islamic Empire in, in Spain or Andalusia is. yes um, in fact in the time when Andalusia was you know, um, this in its apex, as you mentioned, in the civilization, a lot of the arts that came to the West that you know sparked the Renaissance or inspired the Renaissance to mobilize was actually from the East, and um, in particular in music, there's a man named Zirya back in uh, 900 AD, came from Baghdad, and he came to Andalusia and he started the first musical conservatory in history, in recorded history. Um, and it's interesting because he implemented a lot of the latest fashions of the East that sort of form Western civilization in the usage of soap, for example, haircuts, music, and all of those encompasses into a culture that um, we can say as uh, Muslims or you know the Islamic world has really uh, left a mark in human history. Um, but a lot of people, they don't realize that because you know, a lot of these facts and information have been either suppressed or altogether wiped out. But um, they have to keep that in mind that we have a heritage in the arts. We have a history in the arts, a very strong one, and it is relevant till today. You have to remember that. Yeah. I looked at one of the historical uh, definitions of culture, and it is what uh, the, the definition is 
what brings you from an ignorant state to a knowledgeable state. That is how they define culture. And when you talk about Islam and culture, I think that just defines and that just makes it a need to have in our religion, in our faith. It's compatible. It, it is very compatible. And, it, and you know, uh, when, when, one, when, when you say one is a cultured person, he, he understands the needs of society, the needs of his family, the needs of himself, and the needs of the ummah. And to have that, you know, we, I mean, we need to have that in Islam. We need to have more of it. We need to emphasize it. As long as it is, you know, uh, ethical. And, you know, a lot of people just tell you it is prohibited and, you know, we should not try and, you know, because we should go into the unseen, unknown. That's just absolute, you know. I think in rubbish. Rubbish. Yes, yeah, I mean, rubbish. arts, if you look in a wider sense, I think it has more benefits than disbenefits. Oh, what is it? Drawbacks. Drawbacks, exactly. Yeah. I mean, art it's, is, a, is a good way for one to express themselves and a lot of the arts you can see, I, I mean, in history, is, is very enlightening. Enlighten oneself in their perspective of the world, the understanding of existence, and I think that, in a way, can lead someone, draw them closer to yeah. God, you know, and because appreciation of life itself is appreciation of God, because we need to... Yeah. Uh, see the things around us and you know how how that what that means to us and that's what I think art is like we're taking what we have in what's around us and implementing it in our own way of expressing it and that, that's good it's healthy for everyone to have that you know sure. I would just like to add I think what he meant uh, Ibrahim was telling us about art as being uh, quite neutral so you put in the value of art itself so how do in, in today's terms how do we turn art into something which is more you know accepted in an Islamic way, for example. But when you see that, and then you see about uh, worship or ibadah in Islam, and there's endless ways of, of performing worship. So why don't we see art as a worship as fact? Mm -hmm. Like even you have a carving of, you know, uh, Allah, you know, with uh, nice uh, ornaments, in fact. I think that's a form of worship already. A form of da'wah, so, well. da in fact. Yes. yes, I mean, even looking back to the Prophet's time, the Prophet had his own poet. His name was Hassan ibn Thabit. And, and he was given, uh, usually he would be reciting his poem in the mosque, in the, in the, on the pulpit, or, or the minaret. And, and everyone will be there to listen. And, and it's happening in the mosque. And it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's poetry. Or before the war, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you know, one of its benefits. It's an example of how art can benefit the society, its use for the benefit of you know the people uh, yes. living together and you know, yes. to yes. Make, uh, create a sense of um, well-being in everyone involved yeah yes. so I mean as you said uh, like one of its benefits is that before the war uh, in the prophet's time the soldiers would would listen to uh, you know uh, some poetry that would bring up their spirits yeah. and you know would help them and you know spiritual uplifting yes I mean, spiritual uplifting we will look even before the time of the Prophet, even in the Quran stated that God gave beautiful voice to David, Daud alayhi salam, to, for him to sing in praise of God. So it, it goes to show that God is saying that, you know, there are a lot of things we can do to express ourselves, but it's also the intention, of it's, it's for, to benefit you know, the people around you to, and also to draw you closer to God. And yeah. one, why not? You know. you know, one can even say that the Quran itself is very poetic and very beautiful and it is, it is God's greatest creation and it, it is His greatest artwork. No objection to our, that. Our greatest uh, uh, ni'mah, our greatest blessing from Him. I mean, I, I get what uh, a lot of the, con I guess, modern Muslims have, or like the popular theologians have problem with it. I think it's not more of the, the, you know, the value of art itself, but I think it's not accepting certain cultures that have those kind of implementation of arts within, which is kind of, you know, as, as human beings, uh, this is something my father told me. It's like knowledge is like a lost treasure. When you find it, you keep it and you share it. So it, is, it means that you can't say that these people claim it's theirs. No, it, it's something that as a human being, someone discovers something and shares. It belongs to all of us. Yeah. So we, I think we have to get out of that you know, mindset that, oh, we only in this culture we have to do it this way. 
that culture through that way when it's a universal you know, ex, you know art is a universal thing I'm so much it's against like, like labeling uh, things yeah like, you know, like say this is Arab culture and this and, is uh, and you know, sadly Arab you know especially in the Arab world I mean the educational system they don't pay attention to, to, to art to artistic, you know, for example, subject, they don't have any literature, you know, literature or anything. They have, I mean, they study Arabic within its depth, but they don't, they don't pay much attention to creative, you yeah, know, the language. Yes, language. exactly, and that's just sad. That's just wrong. I mean, we have so many, so many artists, so many uh, knowledgeable artists, so many people, scholars, that were so versed in culture and arts back then, and it is our responsibility to to bring up. To bring forward yeah. their, their their legacy, basically, continuity to continue it. Exactly. Okay, let me ask you a, a pertinent question, I suppose, for 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 today's age. Um, you're you're a father, or you're a leader in the community, and you have to lead, and you have to make decisions on behalf of a community to ensure their their progress and their growth and nurturing them. How do you make a distinction? How do you allow every single art form that has ever been created? on earth today from all across the world and you let it loose in the world. Now it's available everywhere on the internet. So when we're talking about intention of the music, how do you protect your child, for example, from listening to a, a, a track, I'll call it something yeah, denigrating. Yeah. Something denigrating a female form or a woman or uh, you know yeah. talking about cash or talking about money and, and you know gangsters and whatever it is. How do you how do you live in today's world with all this I'll call it trash around because it's trash to the soul, it, it's polluting in a way. Yeah. And these people are aware of this and that's why there's this, I think, uh, need to want to stop it permanently, you know, because mm -hmm. what other way can you do it? You know, yeah. Can you filter it? Then they say there's no freedom of speech, can you, what are I you guess, doing? I guess the best way is, is when you, I guess the, maybe the first step to take is just to educate people. To educate people about the boundaries of, you know, which you, cannot, let's say, uh, overtake, which is, you know, the basic boundaries of God and, okay. you know, which you cannot really play around with, for example. Uh, see, education is, has to be a baseline right over there. And once they have this solid uh, baseline, uh, which is education, you know, you have to give them the opportunity and you have to inst install in them the fact that they can and they should be able to do anything that is creative. Yeah. As long as it is ethical, you know you have been educated what is right and what is wrong, yeah. and you know use that for the good of society. I mean, it's inevitable. I mean, people are going to find out things, you know, um, regardless of what happens. Is going to, you know, they're going to know about something. You're going to hear about it. You're going to know. But I think one important thing is uh, that's why Islam like emphasizes that the family is important. So once our family have a strong foundation of you know these moral codes, we you know we teach each other at, every day. We remind each other that you know these things, these lessons that we learn from the Quran or from Islam, or from whatever. I mean, it doesn't necessarily be Muslim family, but a family that cultivates good culture within you know. But where can they learn this? Where where are the resources for the parents to learn to make a distinction between say, hey, here's a list of songs and they have a negative yeah. content because of this word or because of this, it's talking about you know talking about uh, like censorship in a way. Yeah, yeah censorship in a way. Can we not compile a list of you know movies or music or something you know? And how does this affect a young mind or how does this affect an unassuming mind or how does this affect a mind that doesn't uh, doesn't take the core of Islam, which is ikra, read, learn, recite. The very first word that Angel Gabriel said to our Prophet, he didn't say pray, he said read. Yeah. How do we how do we overcome these things? I, mean, I guess that's the problem education. for the whole ummah, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah. I think it, it all starts with education. Once uh, people have proper education, uh, you know, and then the sky's the limit. You know, right. the base. The problem is education. Right. Can I just want to add uh, one more thing about the art uh, and its relation to uh, what the youth today would say, cool or awesome. Now this is a, it's a both side. It's an odd, we have the audience of arts and the people who's making arts. So in this sense, I think uh, the people who's making arts has to be uh, on par, in fact, uh, with the people who's making arts and, you know, which is, like you said, denigrating you know, woman form or whatnot. So these people who who's, uh, who's more, you know, uh, values the proper art and, and it's a true form, and which is in true nature, you know, 
to uh, elevate man uh, to be you know spiritual uplifting so this form of art should be thriving rather than this trash that you're saying so and then naturally the audience would have it's a matter of you know choice of course you see two two cool things and then you would definitely want to go to the you know something which is more uh, it's good to your heart. So as a closing remark, would you say that promoting these things, so doing our utmost to promote what we view as Muslims as, a, as good art and mm -hmm. as permissive art, yeah. we, really have to, we really have to push more this promotion of this particular art, yeah. rather than accepting everything that's created from outside and saying, yeah, hey, yeah, this is awesome. As long as yeah. that, we also have to um, understand that art is important and very beneficial and uh, not to restrain ourselves to not allow ourselves to be creative like as my mom said so that's that's another point like if we have something good to share we have to share yeah i think my guest tonight thank you one begs to ask the question why allah would create us with such an innate deep-seated desire to create sculpture painting poetry humor or music to mention a few the Almighty has created man with the best physical and intellectual abilities. Desires for beauty and stateliness of thought and practice are found in his nature. It may only be the pureness of our heart and our intention behind our efforts that are to be questioned. Nothing else. Thank you for joining us.